We start our coverage now with News 6 reporter James Sparvero. He is live at Exploration Park with a look at how the companies shaping our future in space are also reshaping the Space Coast. James. Those private companies, Ginger, good evening. You're looking at two of them on your screen right now. A satellite factory built here at Exploration Park from OneWeb Satellites. And then back there behind me, the rocket factory, the Megat rocket factory from Blue Origin founded by the richest man in the world. Consider this, Ginger, on this historic date 50 years ago, you didn't have Exploration Park. And just like a half century ago, the Kennedy Space Center was called on to be the new spaceport to help us get to the moon. What's happening here will also help us get back to the moon. I watched the moon landing in 1969 uh, when I was five years old. The world's richest man is now 55 and constructing his own launch pad to get to the moon. It had a huge impact on me. I remember I could tell how excited all the grown-ups around me were. Growing Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos has the concept of not just launching mega rockets from the Cape, but building them on the Space Coast, too. Blue Origin's rocket factory near Kennedy Space Center is building 300-foot rockets called New Glenn, after the late John Glenn, of course. And just a few miles from this site, an entirely new launch pad as well. So we've got so many launch pads out there at the Cape. One by one, we're starting to see them come back to life. NASA is quick to credit its many commercial partnerships, including Blue Origin, with revamping excitement about deep space exploration. Ignition. It's also an exciting new era in aerospace for the Air Force and Port Canaveral. This month, the rocket booster powering NASA's key Orion abort test came from the Air Force's stockpile of decommissioned Cold War era missiles. And as large crowds watch the launch at the port, guests once again can also see a rocket right in the channel. Reminiscent of the space shuttle boosters being towed back to the Cape, SpaceX recovery operations are happening just across from the Cove Waterfront District. When you think about going to the moon and then on to Mars, it's such an immense and expensive effort that we need the partnerships of other countries and other commercial partners in order to pull this off. With aspirations closer to our home planet, other spaceflight companies want to cash in on the market for small satellites. Firefly Aerospace could make its first launch from its pad at the Cape in the next two years. Another of the smaller players, Rocket Crafters, is testing its 3D printed rockets on the same road in Cocoa where SpaceX is building its interplanetary starship at a steel plant. Inside the Rocket Crafters facility, even the rocket fuel is 3D printed. Our engineers will sit here and create a brand new fuel design in an afternoon, uh, print it out the next day and we can test it the same week. We believe that this is a technology that will help revolutionize space access. A new generation of brilliant minds out here on the Space Coast. So we talked about Firefly Aerospace. They also want to build a rocket factory here, Ginger, next to Blue Origins facility. They will also fly OneWeb satellites, the satellite factory here. And about Blue Origin back there, they're not done with construction. If I could show you a little bit more to the left of your screen, they've got an entirely new campus under construction. It's in its early stages of development. Live at the Kennedy Space Center's Exploration Park, I'm James Sparvero, getting results, News 6. Ginger, back to you.